Hello, hello, everybody. It's Karina here again. I'm very excited about our talk today. We're going to be chatting with Asher Hill, um, who is a fellow ice dancer. So I'm so excited to have another ice dancer on today. Um, so let's just wait a minute and see if he joins. Hopefully you can all hear me. I'm trying to go without the headset today. A little bit of funny sound quality with the headset yesterday, but if you can't hear me, let me know in the little comments and I will maybe switch back to the headset. <laughs> Thanks for joining everybody. So excited for this talk today. You can hear me, yay, thank you for the people who are responding, perfect. <laughs> yay, okay. And hopefully, I'm in a house with my family so they might make a little noise. I'll try to explain it if you hear something. <laughs> or my dog, I have a dog here. <laughs> Uh, Asher has joined and we're going to request you guys can see my pixie cut growing out in real time on these chats hello hey, hey, hey. how are you I'm good how are you you know, chilling. You know, hanging in the middle. I say hanging in the middle, like not great, not amazing, but mm -hmm. flatline, but not dead. <laughs> for that, we're grateful. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Question right now is tough, but I think I think it's good to answer honestly. Um, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I've 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 uh, I've made it a mission to be like not say like I'm good all the time, which is like you know. Catch yeah. someone off guard, it's just terrible, awful. It's just a horrible. We <laughs> <laughs> have to be able to talk about that. So I think it's, a, I do the, I'm guilty of that. I'm, I'm great all the time. Um, yeah. but something to think about. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm so excited for this talk today. We have Asher Hill, who, if you don't know, six years on Team Canada, world Same. team competitor. Yeah, am I right with six years? I think so. Some of that. <laughs> Not the best math, so English major. Sorry if I missed that. World team incredible skater. Host of that skating show with Dylan. Um, and so, yes. Um, so really excited to have you on. You have quite the resume. Um, I wanted to maybe start out with just getting a little get to know you background maybe how you got started in skating, where you trained. Um. Uh, okay, so uh, I started skating at the age of three, two and a half, three years old. And uh, it was because my my mom and dad, who are Jamaican immigrants, they were a fan of skating. Like, they loved Sabrina Bonnelly. Um, they loved Debbie Thomas. Uh, and actually, my dad's favorite skater was Ravi Walia. <laughs> Very interestingly. Uh, and uh, my sister really liked watching it, and so she wanted to try it. And because we're twins, and I guess it's easier to monitor twins if you just put them in the same thing, which I totally get. Uh, <laughs> they put us both into skating, and I absolutely, absolutely hated it. Uh, I uh, pretty much lived in my whole skating career was at the Scarborough Figure Skating Club, and it's a real skating rink, so it has no boards. It's just like, yeah. I've heard of that rink. <laughs> yeah, so there's just no boards. So when I was on the ice, I'd, all I would do was just eat the ice, cry, and then like crawl off, and my dad would have to chase me and push me back on the ice, and then I'd crawl to another <laughs> corner, get off, and he had to bribe me with french fries, and then I was wasting their time and money, so they put they took me out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, makes sense. And then uh, I still have to go to the rink all the time with my sister, because mm -hmm. uh, after school and all that stuff. So eventually I got back into it and uh, started to build like a knack for it and uh, really started loving it and stopped eating ice. Uh, and uh, yeah, it started getting really good and, you know, eventually 
uh, you know, getting good at free skate, getting even better at dance, and going as far as I did in dance, and yeah, here I am now. I love that story. I feel like always, <laughs> like, oh, I got on the ice, and I loved it, and, like... Yeah, I just, I out. glid, and I felt alive, and I felt like a bird, and, like, no, no, it was that. I was eating the marker mixed with ice, <laughs> and crying, and sobbing. It was awful. <laughs> story. So for anybody out there who doesn't love it at first, this one's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it takes a while and, and and funny enough even like me getting into ice dance um i used to do like solo dance at some competitions and uh mary jane stong who uh was kind of like the she would come and monitor the kid like uh athletes and um national team especially ice dance but i didn't know her at the time i was only like eight but she uh approached my um she approached my mom at like, a club at a, at a competition. She's like, oh, the, you should really consider putting your son in ice dance. And I was like, oh, what's that? <laughs> and then she went up to my coach, Carol Lane, and she's like, this lady came up to me and said he should like get a partner and go into ice dance. And she's like, absolutely not. <laughs> your, your son's like, quote, I don't think she said an idiot, but alluded to that. <laughs> because uh, it was true, though. I couldn't figure out my left from my right. Uh, her teaching me like the swing dance and all those things. She literally had a conniption. I'm pretty sure I gave her a complex. Uh, but yeah, no, I, <laughs> she was right. She was right. I couldn't make it, but you know, eventually she ate her words and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Very successful. So. <laughs> um, oh, and I love that you started out in solo dance. I did too. And I started yeah. like, I'm like a teenager, um, but I love the solo dance program, so that's a cool little plug for that um, here. Um, yeah. Okay, and then one more quick getting to know you question. Do you mm -hmm. have a favorite skating memory? A favorite skating memory? Um, okay, there are a few. Uh, one was... Um, actually, they'll... So one was uh, at our very first at Worlds, our one and only Worlds in Nice after the free dance. We skated really well and stuff like that. And um, uh, there's like a like partial standing ovation, which is pretty cool for your, your Worlds. And then yeah. uh, our marks came up and then everyone started booing. It was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was like, and you're just like, oh, wow, booing. They like. Love does hate the judges. I like I, I love that. <laughs> so that's one of them. Seen that at a skating competition. Oh my god, it's actually happened to us a few times. <laughs> we've gotten we're, uh, it's gotten booed. Uh, one other time was our skate Canada, and we did the can can and same thing. It was a good boo from yeah. the audience, which is just again, it's very surreal, but it's just like oh cool, they like us at least. That's nice. <laughs> oh so funny. I like I don't know if like American crowds are different or like. <laughs> But I would love to see a bit more, like, enthusiastic, rowdier skating crowds. I don't know. That's just me. That's kind of fun. hundred <laughs> percent. They should have, like, those buttons and there's, like, a, a, a vote. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> Best program. Judges, like, if they agree, disagree. Like, a buzzer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the X buzzer from X Factor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I assume. <laughs> um, okay so i mean obviously we're here to have fun um we're gonna keep having fun but i think there's also some things that we want to talk about on this call you have been very vocal standing up against discrimination in the skating community and mm -hmm. Recently, you spoke with CBC, you've been speaking out on Twitter um, about how at your rank you spoke up against discrimination and the systems in skating didn't protect you and didn't really work with you. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that story. So yeah, pretty much essentially what you said. Um, I was having uh, issues with the coach for a few years, but um... I kept like kind of working and actually we were, we were very good friends, which is the, the, one of the other shitty things. Mm -hmm. I might let you <laughs> I'll try not to say any more swear words, but uh, it was, uh, 
<laughs> but it, it eventually just became very toxic to the point where like I was like crying coming into the rink and um, my sister who also worked there was just having a uh, a terrible time um, and completely and I, I would always try and keep our our lives separate from the business of skating so I would I would uh, really keep it like okay you're having a problem I'll help you a little bit out but like, I really want to just make sure that we're keeping like professional stuff like that but she was having her own experiences I was having my own experiences they're both kind of very similar in terms of what was uh in uh in terms of what what it was like racial discrimination and so eventually I had had enough of it and I um had parted ways with that coaching team and uh eventually I made an official complaint to club I was working at um, and with Skate Canada. Uh, I asked Skate Canada to jump in on the investigation because the club I was working at, SCBC, uh, Skate Canada Brampton Shinkuzi, had um, hired their own uh, like independent person and I didn't really trust them because the board is very partial towards this coach and the power he wields and a lot of the skaters were on the board and stuff like that so i didn't trust it at all so i went to skate canada i'm like can you please do your own investigation i do not trust them i do not think this is going to be fair i do not think the other coaches are also like are very biased uh and favorable to him so i do not trust this process please do your own investigation essentially they did not uh and they just piggybacked off that investigation which found all my all my allegations baseless, untrue, and substantiated, and even said that uh, that my claims were based on my sister's experience, and that because I was only bringing these forward because of the experience my sister had, and she was being harassed a lot at the club, uh, and so that's pretty much it. And so Skate Canada just like, yeah, we agree. And then also because you sent an email to the clientele of the Ice Dance. Uh, saying that I was no longer working with them and just settled mm -hmm. the bills and why I was leaving, that I would be as I was um I was uh, I was held in contempt of their harassment, bullying, and abuse clause. <laughs> so I went from you know from reporting abuse, harassment, just, uh, racism, homophobia, misogyny to being now the the actual problem i was a bully i was the aggressor i was everything else and so you know when that whole flip just gets uh, that script gets flipped on you it mm -hmm. really uh fucks with your brain <laughs> it oh, makes no. you feel lesser than it makes you feel like uh you already have like mistrust in the system you know growing up as like a, a black man and you know that like you have to work harder just just being black and you have to be aware of your surroundings all the time and just be uh mindful of the people you keep because you never know that one day they're just going to be like n-word <laughs> and, like, and so uh so uh so it really it really messed me up and I, I tried to appeal it um i brought more evidence forward they pretty much to me i feel like they didn't even read it they just dealt, held fast they kept their letter of reprimand and um here we are now they put up that post of black lives matter we are for inclusion and a safe environment and then i just kind of lost it i also had lost my grandmother like two days before that so i kind of like just i just i i just started my just twitter fingers <laughs> just went off and then yeah. no but i think <laughs> it's so important i think what you've done and talked about um is is not just about you but it's helping so many other skaters within the sport um and i i think i just as a skater thank you for standing up for what's right um because i think we we need more of that in skating um and just hearing your story also i mean it's so frustrating to hear that coming forward with claims involving your sister was used to discredit you because i think we need more people working as active bystanders bystanders within mm -hmm. skating in order to intervene in situations where discrimination and abuse is is going on um mm -hmm. and so these systems are obviously not quite set up to properly address these issues um mm -hmm. and i'm curious oh also for everybody there is a change.org petition um to reopen asher's case is created by a lot and it's in <laughs> asher's bio <laughs> <laughs> it's in my personal bio um you can find it very easily um so go sign that if 
you're with us and you think that this case really needs to be reevaluated. Um, but in terms of finding ways for skating and sports in general to better address these these problems, what do you think going forward maybe needs to happen? Um, well, uh, during these past two weeks or how many weeks, it's, everything's been a blur. It's been, um, it's been really cool to have, to see the support that I have, that the skating community has for me and everyone else who's gone through the same issues, you know, emailing me. We've had a lot of great, uh, Zoom, we have had many Zoom calls with, uh, skaters from America, France, uh, other black skaters like Vanessa James, my, uh, Berenice, um, uh, Elaj, uh, my sister, uh, Elliot, uh, Halverson and uh, Joel uh, Savory is that how you say his name? I can't remember. Uh, but like of, of Diversify Ice, and we've just been really working together to make a coalition of of inclusion and diversity and equity, uh, and really trying to come forward with um, you know make plans and eventually release like a, a, a call of change and action to our federations uh, mm -hmm. to you know. Uh, to evaluate their blind spots and their their shortcomings in investigating things like these, because um, you know I went the safe sport route, and um, I know there are people kind of watching what I was going through, and then they're like, "I'm not doing that." They literally just said, "I'm not. It's not worth it. It's not. It's not set up for these kind of claims." Um, you know, it was it was built out of um, you know what happened to the women of the. Uh, gymnastics team in, in America mm -hmm. that often um, and so it's set up to like you know uh, combat abuse and sexual abuse uh, mm -hmm. and even that they don't seem to do very well at all uh, still now to this day so it's not so if it can't even set if it can't even handle the mandate that it was set up to do uh, it's for sure as hell not gonna you know be able to touch on discrimination and and um, and racism so we yeah so we we just want to come up with a coalition and an active plan to like send out to them to be like here's our list of uh things that we want changed um and hopefully they'll listen and hopefully we have that coming up soon so it's uh it's pretty exciting stuff on the back so i it's with the mix of sadness and anxiety there's been like lots of energy and hope and happiness so uh I, i'm very motivated to keep doing the change and you know hearing from people who've gone through similar things and are afraid to talk up but, or speak mm -hmm. up that it's been um it's been invigorating to help mm -hmm. you keep going yeah yeah and i think something along with this is like with safe sport there are so many barriers to reporting in the first place and then obviously people can see what happens in some instances when they report and it's turned on their head and they face backlash and maybe they're made to be the ones yeah. remanded. And I think that is something that definitely needs to be addressed within these structures. Because if we really want to prevent abuse, we, we have to take down those barriers to reporting it um, and show that something's going to happen. Um, to stop it. Uh, and something interesting, I went on the Safe Sport USA website last night, and the mission does say to stop emotional, um, I believe, physical and sexual abuse in sport. Mm -hmm. um, and I think while those are necessary facets, I think there are a lot of other types of abuse. Um, we have financial abuse and psychological abuse and like cultural and identity based abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to have a system set up in place to address those as well, obviously. Um, so along with this discrimination we're seeing, I think we're both ice dancers um, mm -hmm. and ice dance is uniquely problematic. Really, when I think of problematic ice dance, I think of uh, Shabalin and Domina and the 2010 OD. That's that's just like I can't get that out of my brain. <sighs> Anyways, that's not long ago, guys. No, it's not. <laughs> Ten years ago, they dressed up and offended Aboriginal people from Australia, and and like were picking lice out of each other's hair. It was so disgustingly racist, and we're like, yeah, good. 
we'll have this for a full season <laughs> and not force him to get rid of it. That's that's a problem, man. <laughs> So I maybe wanted to talk a little bit about the ways that really discrimination racism is built into our sport and what needs to happen mm-hmm. to that and start start fixing things. <laughs> I, I think like I think what it is too is that like everything's very uh like Eurocentric and stuff like that. Uh so like, you know, um it's, so whenever like people like um we we'll try to use, uh, you know, different rhythms of like Latin or hip hop or African or African jazz or stuff like that. It would immediately be like, mm, I don't know, I don't like it. It's like it's too, it's too, too many of those in there. <laughs> I don't know. It's just been like, and and it's very interesting because in my case, um. Uh, when we had to do the original dance uh, twice, when it was like um, folk dance, we chose to do African one because like uh, I'm black, and so it's like okay, at least we could like do it. I'm like I'm not I'm not African. My parents are from Jamaica. I mean, we're all African, but <laughs> originally, but my parents are from Jamaica, so it's not necessarily like my culture but i could get away with it and as soon as we did anything like that they immediately like pigeonholed us like oh asher and uh karis they just constantly just do like black based stuff and i'm like uh we did like nutcracker we did carmen one year we did gershwin one year we did like elephants jail yes black people uh but jazz like we did so many different things we skated to cinderella and they're just like ah african again i'm like what (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it's just like weird stuff like that you can pigeonhole yeah then... that's horrible and I think it's interesting <laughs> you, I don't believe you would see a team with white skaters and the judges being like oh you always do waltzing you know yeah so... yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh my goodness and I think it's interesting because Ice Dance uses rhythms that come from Latin America that come from black people that come from indigenous populations to say because you did programs rooted in african rhythms to say that now that's what you're doing like i Dance is based in rhythms that come from these populations um yeah, um, yeah. And so, go ahead go ahead oh no no you continue <laughs> <laughs> i i lost my thought <laughs> it seems like you're a better trajectory oh uh, no i mean i just think in terms of like pattern dances so I did a little Googling the other day, okay. um, Wikipedia research, and you can go online and see the creators of our compulsory dances. And for the most part, I mean, anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, please, actually, please correct me if I'm wrong. But it looked like all of the creators were white people, yeah, um, yeah. And people of European descent. Mm. And I think when the people making the dances based in Latin rhythms, based in rhythms that come from black populations and indigenous populations, and white people are the ones creating these patterns, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that like when, because I, I think I told you the story too, but I, I, the, my, ballroom, my ballroom coach, I cannot remember the name of this famous ballroom dancer or whatever, but he, he was, he was known for just like competing, winning, and then disappearing for like two years and then coming back and then just reinventing himself and looking amazing again and winning all these land bottom competitions. And when they asked him, like, how do you keep doing this? He's like, well, I go down to like Latin America, I'll go to Argentina, Buenos Aires, and like, I'll watch these, these Latin rhythms that are based, um, you know, on, uh indigenous dances mixed with african cultures as well and i'll watch them i'll learn them and then i'll i'll sanitize them and then bring them back <laughs> for like the, you know the ballroom european masses and then work and like that 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 story always sticks in my head because like sanitize <laughs> it's like sanitize like what does that mean so like get get rid of like the butt wiggling get rid of like the gyration because that's you know uncouth that's sexualized when it's just like to them, it was just dancing and a celebration and ritualistic in a way. But I always, that story always sticks in my mind. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, one that sticks in my mind was like our last season. Um, Tango Row was the dance. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a piece of music that was a tango. Um, and a judge sent to the us. Eh, I'm not I'm not quite sure that this this counts as a tango. Um, and from that moment on, and I mean, so my dad was born in Uruguay, which is a country in Latin America, close to Argentina, mm -hmm. one of the birthplaces of tango. Um, mm -hmm. And that moment just made me think, and not to say that I'm the arbiter of like what a tango is, mm -hmm. but I was just like, sir, who made you in charge of that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I think speaks to the fact that we need more people of color, we need more Latin Americans, black people <laughs> in judging. Yeah. As long as it's white people in charge of deciding these things. It will stay like kind of, yeah, I will just say very narrow and focused and kind of just myopic. Like they don't really branch out and expand. Uh, and I, I think it's, I think it's happening a little bit because of now like, you know, lyrics and freescape, but it's still very much like the same. Like you still like, the amount of music that's in the world and every year we still get at least four Romeo and Juliet's. It's like, you know, <laughs> and I, you know, like everyone loves Romeo and Juliet. It's easy to, do, not easy to do, but like, you know, it's, it's a story that people get, people know it. It's just that, but like, you know, it's, uh, branching out to something different would be, you know, nice. And I know that not all the time branching out is good. Like for example, like you guys, are, do different things all the time. You guys, well, did different things all the time because they're not retired. But like, you know, Piper, Piper and Paul would do very different things with like modern uh, mm -hmm. music and stuff like that. And it would never be recognized and be like, ooh, I'm like, oh, I like that you try, but nah, not really. It's, eh, um, you know, I, I think there, there has to be an appreciation for different styles of skating and a different style of movement. Um, instead of just keeping it like, oh, this is the best. Like, of course, there's technical aspects of like how someone can use glide properly and efficiently move and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I think there has to be an appreciation for different types of movement if we really want to try and call our sports like dance. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I I think you're absolutely right on that. Um, and I think it's, it's an important conversation everybody in dance needs to be having. Um, mm -hmm might as well work with us the momentum that we have mm -hmm. and get this conversation going and hopefully i mean i, I see you again if you're listening <laughs> <laughs> i would love to spot on the ice here i don't know what i would do but great <laughs> you can just shout at people i love shouting at people it's great um, <laughs> but that it's also like it's also that you also you're like i knew that this year was it I don't know what the dance is this year because I'm not like in the loop right now. I'm not really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like they were about to do um, uh, folk music again, and like I was immediately like, "Oh my god, there's gonna be like uh, a team from like Russia doing like um, you know uh, Nigerian folk dance or something like that, or like <laughs> just like doing something like that." Like, oh no, oh no, no, no. But uh, <laughs> Oh my god, that's so bad that we get anxiety. Like, <laughs> oh no, what, what's it gonna be this? <laughs> and I think that everyone can, like, I think at the end of the day, dance is for everyone, and I think cultural dances can be done by other groups of people but it has to be done in a way that's so like respectful and like i, I don't know it, it it's it's a fine it's a fine line to, to freaking walk in like you know especially now and uh, so long uh these dances have been like kind of bastardized and taken away without any kind of recognition and now people are like hey recognize where that came from now and then you're like oh you're too sensitive and it's like no we're tired of like this being taken and then when we try and do it you're like that's too ghetto or that's too street or that's too ugh. what are you doing gyrating oh it's working and then miley cyrus did it terribly and then everyone's like yeah it's twerking us oh, <laughs> um <laughs> But, you know, but like, we, vocation, everybody. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And it's just like, been like, yo, girls have been doing that at strip clubs like from time. Like, it's just like people have been doing that Africa from time. It's just like now it's just like, you know, 
uh, and it's you know there's deep roots in uh, Eurocentrism and all that different things and you know, you know, trying to squash the the uh, you know, uh, the ethnicities or whatever I don't know I always think find that weird weird when you refer to someone else as like oh they're ethnic but then a white person is not ethnic and then like what is white you know, anyways <laughs> got a lot of things for us yeah. <laughs> we can go on we have to do a second interview we, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think a big thing is is doing research um and and it's not so hard. Google's out there. I mean, it took me like, a few minutes to go and search compulsory dances and like see who those were made by. Um, mm. I'm, I should have done that much sooner in my career. <laughs> um, but but then not just the history of the compulsory dances, but then research the history of your rhythms that you're using. I think is so mm. important. Mm. Just like one step that I think mm. everybody. And it's a super easy one. We literally have super computers in our hands <laughs> all the time. So it's like, a, so when everyone says like, oh, I didn't know something. I'm like, yo, when I want to figure out how like an air fryer works, like Google it because I'm interested because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't understand this magic and then it's not really <laughs> magic. It's just super heated air and a little bit of oil in the air. <laughs> My girlfriend wants an air fryer, but I'm like a little scared. I'm not a good cook. Um, <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, I've only used it once. I don't own one, but it was mm -hmm. uh, quite magical. Sister has one. I'm like, oh wow, these yeah. actually make these fries super like bake them and then put them in the air fryer a little bit and get that like nice and crispy. It's uh, highly okay. recommend. So I need I need <laughs> on Google. I could figure it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So something I we got a few more things to touch on. Um, mm -hmm interview can go as long as we want i'm in charge um, <laughs> i want to talk a little bit about because we are skate proud and we're focused mm -hmm. on queerness and skating i wanted to talk a little bit about your experiences with that world um and if you had anything to say in regards to that um well i, I think that you know there's always been this weird kind of Although skating is, it's like a mix of artistic and athleticism, I think a lot more people who are um, in the LGBTQ2 community, uh, like, they, I, not saying that all of them, but like, we gravitate towards arts, I find. I don't want to generalize, uh, because there's lots of, there's lots of gay athletes, there's lots of gay like carpenters like or mm -hmm. queer carpenters and stuff like that so uh, or whatever we don't yeah. have to be pigeonholed or anything but but it, it was always weird to me when i always see conversations like people on um you know underneath like our our youtube series that uh, figure skating show being like uh i think one time we commented on uh, nathan's chen's like really weird shirts this year uh and um like, i was just like well at least it's not all frilly and girly like you zero hand you and i'm just like i don't understand this like kind of like uh this weird toxic masculinity plus this shaming of uh i don't know fluidity and, and, and gender or like what we could consider to be manly or whatever and and it's like figure skaters often making fun of like other you know gay or queer figure skaters and be like hey you know outside of this sport people don't will immediately say to you and make fun of you for being in a flamboyant sport and yet you're going to double down and make fun of someone your own comrades within a sport i always found that like internalized homophobia very weird mm -hmm. um and just like ugh. and like and you know sometimes like you kind of take part in it too growing up you're like trying to like show that you're manly and stuff like that you know skate canada actually had uh a a weird um it was very short-lived but it was just <laughs> this uh, you know, weird um campaign i'd be like skate like a man kind of thing and like making it very like growy and like of a stoic <laughs> of it make 
Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, like, ugh, like trying to attract boys to the sport by being like, oh, yeah, manly, blah, blah, blah. Like, I can, I can karate chop and do a triple axel and a camel spin. And like, it was like, cool. And it's like, it was very short lived and they got a lot of backlash for it. So they have a history with kind of, you know, fuck shit too. But, uh, and, um, you know, you see it from like, like, you know, coaches as well, just being like, saying like, the f word um you know call if the if the boy shows a little bit of weakness or you know, you know, wait hold on i don't know if it's just me but i'm having a bit of connection problems It might be my, on my end. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hello? You're coming okay. back. Can you hear me? I can hear you now again. Um, you're a little mm -hmm. bit pixelated. I'm pixelated? Oh. Okay. Uh... I don't know. Like, I'm so bad with tech. <laughs> um, so it, can you see me? I can see you, and you're moving around. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you and see you very well. Okay. And it might be me then. It might be me. Okay, I think um, it's getting clearer. So okay, um, I, I forgot where I was. <laughs> uh, oh, just First. being like, yeah, just, just uh, yeah, the weird kind of um, you know. It's, I don't know, they're kind of, it's always like this resisting of making it, like trying to take the flamboyance, the flamboyant, I don't know what, flamboyantness, is that even a word, out of skating when it like calls for it, like in, in ballet you would never ask them to be like less, less, less gay or less whatever, so it's been very, it's odd, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is. And I mean, I think there's a, a very large conversation to be had um, about pushing heterosexuality and skating. I mean, we have mm -hmm. even back to the compulsory dances, but you have the, the man steps and the lady steps. Um, mm -hmm. And even that sort of pushes these heteronormative structures mm -hmm. in our sport and pushes maybe some some old fashioned ideas. Um, mm. I mean, I would love to see a pattern dance with like non designated gender steps. That's like my personal. Mm. Um, mm. <laughs> but I think, yeah, there are a lot of structures within skating that maybe lead to homophobia in the sport in other ways. Um, but I know mm. I'm grateful that you've been speaking out against it. Um, mm. and a lot of people join me in that. Um, so thank you. I, I will always, yeah, like, I mean, to me, it's always about, like, you know, being a, uh, like, a black bisexual man. It's always about just, you know, just loving everybody and just, you know, I think at the end of the day, what I, like, what I think about is, like, is this hurting somebody? Is, is, is what someone doing, like, hurting my life or, like, putting me in danger or is it hurting anybody else? And if the answer is no, then... With all due respect, shut the fuck up and get over it and, like, encourage everyone to just want to live their best fucking life, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, stand up for what's right. And if we believe all humans are equal and deserve life, then stand up for everybody. That's that's it. That's how I see the world. Um, and that's how I want to, you know, make the world see itself. Because I think if you know, just a little bit of humanity and just treating the people at the bottom with respect and helping them up, everyone does better. When the people at the bottom do better, everyone does better. That's just how it works, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so. Um, and I mean, I think something so been a few years ago, I wouldn't have dreamed to be having this conversation like mm -hmm. as two bisexual athletes um, with the platform that we have, with the level of skating that we achieved, um it makes me emotional to think about how this is happening and so i think i think you're out here pushing the sport 
sport forward. Um, and, and I think just having these conversations is pretty radical. Um, and, and I think it's going to make changes. Um, and yeah, thank you for, you know, uh, for having these conversations and for you coming out and like, it's, it's, um, even, uh, you know, especially on the female side of skating, we don't often see that either. Like, it's just like, it's, I don't know, like, there's definitely queer women in our sport. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, like, I, did you ever feel like kind of relegated to like hide yourself within the sport? <sighs> yeah, I found a lot of things. Um... <laughs> 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 I feel a lot of things. And it's a lot to impact because yeah. I our world is homophobic um yeah 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 and so that bleeds into skating and it it goes both ways um and i think i mean i think i had some different experiences than mm. your mate just because um you know skating is whatever considered like a femme sport um and so a lot of my fear was in a place of like i was scared people wouldn't believe me um mm. and i think with men a lot of the fear is like people make assumptions about you. Um, yeah. But I think at the end of the day, it's like, it's the same discrimination. Um, yeah. And it's the same root cause, which is heteronormativity, homophobia. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, yeah, I mean, I think we're all working towards the same thing. Um, and I think, I think we're taking steps, um, which is what needs to happen. The yeah. last thing I wanted to touch on before we go, yeah um is that skating show tell us oh yes <laughs> um so that figure skating show i do with that uh, dylan moskovich and yeah i guess it did start last year it seems like a long time ago now because covid time is infinite and i don't understand it uh so uh yeah it's just been it's been super fun to do uh when we were contacted like the year before in december me and dylan had done uh commentary for the grand prix final uh live commentary which was so stressful all i thought about was not swearing the entire time uh but uh apparently they really liked our our banter and they liked the way we worked with pj and then we just got a random call in an email I'm like hey we have this idea for like a youtube show so like you know comment on skating um and you know just for the grand prix series we want to try it out and we're like okay yeah, sure. Why not? Like we like each other. We've known each other forever, uh, and um, we were just like, "Wow, they don't really know what they're getting themselves into." Like I, <laughs> like some of the B roll we've been watching with like our producer Jackie Dory. Shout out to Jackie; she's amazing. Uh, it's it's been um, it's good. It gets it gets kind of ridiculous. Uh, so they have to rein us in a little bit, but they do give us a lot of free range to do kind of whatever we want. We come in with our own ideas if we want to do costumes and things like that they're fine with it and it's been pretty successful i think i think people are really are liking it um and i i guess it's uh yeah it's it's been it's been a hoot and like i uh and uh i've actually kind of with all this mess going on i've kind of forgotten about it but it was it was a really good time and i'm excited to go back to it and uh you know be with dylan and just uh record silliness and talk about skating which in itself is a ridiculous sport too so it's it uh it's a beautiful sport but fun to make fun of as well and yeah we it's love fun. it but like you've got to laugh yeah <laughs> you have to <laughs> um, yeah, and for everyone in the audience uh i would recommend going to that figure skating show looking up the grand prix france episode because <laughs> they brought props like they have baguettes and they put on accents um and it's pretty great. That's my personal <laughs> own. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, when we like brought the bag out, so like, I hope no French people get bad at us. Uh, and then one time during the uh, Grand Prix final, I <laughs> I said something about cannolis because it was uh, it was in Italy, and so we just wore like. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I wore red, white, and green, and then I went off on like how I hate cannolis and they're not good. <laughs> I think I made those are fighting words. I think. Yeah, they are. But I <laughs> just not. I just don't like them. I don't like them. You know, they're not for me. But, you know. for this cannoli first. <laughs> <we're happy. laughs> Obviously, to be like, I leave Karina in charge for two days and. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh actually and then i didn't realize we've done so many videos you can there's one video there's like 31 videos on uh for that figure skating show and i'm like what i don't remember filming that much but apparently we did so, was, so if you watch one a day you'll be good for july how about that mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i think i'm just gonna check i think we have a an audience question i'm gonna look um, somebody asked, do you like Dylan? <laughs> oh, I absolutely hate that man. I like look at his eyes and I just like, I, it takes so much for me not to vomit. Uh, no, I, 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 I adore that man. He has been so great. He's been so supportive throughout like all this. Uh, he's been supportive before that. He's just a genuinely nice guy. He's an eternal optimist. He will go out of his way to do like anything for you. He'll like triple book his schedule and run around like the city like a madman trying to accommodate everybody, almost to like a fault. But that's who he is, and he's he's a great person. Dylan Dylan Moskovich, I love you, man. He's great. He's amazing. Um, and then somebody else asked, "How are you so happy and funny?" <laughs> Me? Uh, it's uh. <laughs> I'm happy and funny, and then it's interspersed by moments of crying in my bed and like eating uh, chocolate. Uh, actually, not even chocolate. It's just it's like it's chips. It's it's uh, uh, um, what is it called? Sweet chili heat Doritos. Tears and sweet chili heat Doritos. So it's not always happiness, but I I do like to smile and laugh because if I don't, it would just be kind of sadness all the time. Um, because I like to overthink and I like to, you know, I really try and empathize with people as much as possible. And that can, although I think that's a good thing to have, it can be very taxing on um, your soul. But uh, yeah, I just, it's natural. It's natural. And maybe a defense mechanism, but it's fine. You know, <laughs> trauma, know. maybe. It's trauma. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just hiding trauma. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so that's most of the questions i saw i'm still getting the hang of like figuring out how to find um but that's what i have seen so if there's anything you want to add just before we part um feel free to um, no uh, i guess to me i'm just um you know uh Thank you everyone for the support uh, so far. Um, and I really want people to stay encouraged and keep fighting the good fight and trying to make change and, you know, to be an ally into a group that you're not part of uh, takes work. And I know some people are, are getting some exhaustion already, but I would like to say uh, without too much handholding, like, you can't get tired. Like people have been experiencing what they've been experiencing for so much longer than you. And it's not, I'm not trying to do like, uh, it's not supposed to be like a suffering Olympics. Like I've suffered more, I've suffered more, but be aware of that. And I know it gets tiring and taxing, but you have to build up the muscle to, you know, fight these things and take time for yourself, but please do not give up on your allyship and working to make people that you say you care and love, um, uh, feel safe in this world, feel safe in their community, feel safe in whatever part of society they they belong to. Um, and without your help, they cannot achieve that. So I want everyone to keep fighting, uh, keep the energy up. I, I, I know that there's a wave right now around the world and I, I think we have to keep sustaining it and it's people that will make the change and it's possible. So that's, that's it. And, uh, you know, uh, and if you're, you know, a black skater, a skater of color, a queer skater, you know, this sport is for you. Um, and I'm going to keep working my hardest to make it for you and make you feel accepted. And, you know, when someone tries to put you down to make sure that there are ways for you to speak out, feel comfortable and feel that you won't be, you know, held responsible for your own oppression, you know, so, yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're working to make sure that doesn't happen to you, so. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for uh, inviting me to the interview. Uh, thank you, Karina, you did a great job. Uh, I knew you, I know you were nervous. <laughs> I know you were nervous, but you did a great job. 
Um, and I think what you and Javi are doing is absolutely amazing. And again, it's it's about having these conversations and being candid and stuff like that. So thank you for giving me the space to do that. Yeah, um, I had a great time. Um, I I think we should chat again sometime. Um, but. Mm-hmm. But for now, go have a good day. Have some Doritos. Um, <laughs> cry Doritos and a coffee. That's that's, that's hmm. the order. <laughs> Maybe I'll make that my. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.